Hi everyone, it's Jakey again, and I'm back with a new video looking at the final stages of the Prime Weapons. Now, we can't access them quite yet. They, we've got the dats for them now, but they won't be available until later this month. And there's actually three new stages. The second of those just has the same skill as the previous Rima weapons did. And with the final stage having actually more skill, that might suggest we might be getting some new redos of the other Rimas, potentially. Also suggests we're probably going to be doing a lot of work. And sadly, uh, the first of those new stages says uh, you get the new weapon skill only in Sortie. So I suspect we're going to have to do an awful lot more Sortie with this update. Anyways, there's a few general things to note about the weapons. Um, they all have uh, two uh, tier 1 skill chain properties and one tier 2. And they're arranged in such a way that if you use the new weapon skill three times in a row, you will make a light or dark skill chain in every case. Uh, now, none of them give you access to like your missing tier 2 skill chain property, but in order to achieve what they did there, in most cases you will achieve the missing tier 2 skill chain property uh, with the tier 1 skill chain property, so you'll be able to sort of manufacture that property. So uh, that's a decent compromise of giving you a bit more flexibility with skill chaining without giving you everything. We don't know if there's any hidden properties. We don't know exactly how hard these are to get. Someone was posting now. I mean, I don't know how much I trust them. Uh, supposedly there's a purple glow in the deaths. So uh, that would be exciting if that's true. We don't know how good the weapon skills are. We know their properties and we know their description. They all have uh, damage varies with TP, which is a good sign. But it really matters how much that damage varies with TP and where that damage is at. So... A lot to still find out to see how good these weapons are, but we're just going to look at sort of the raw stats and think about how would I use this weapon for something other than whatever the special weapon skill it has is, um, not knowing if that weapon skill is any good or not. Okay, here I've just listed out the order. Uh, it'll be in this description as well with timestamps. But it also uh, here it shows you, you know, which job each one has, so... If you're only playing certain jobs, you can kind of skip to uh, the weapons you care about. Okay, so starting with the sword. Now, the sword was actually one of two weapons where uh, they listed a skill chain property that doesn't exist, but we're fairly certain it's liquefaction in order to fit the pattern of all the other weapon skill properties that have been listed. So putting that in there, but highlighting it because it might be something else potentially, but we're pretty sure it's probably liquefaction. Anyways, looking at the weapon here. Now, we don't know if any of these stats only work in the main hand. Because that's another thing a lot of Raymans have. Or not always all the stats will work uh, in the offhand. So, that's still a question. But nothing here specifies one way or the other. But they often don't. That remains to be seen. First thing, note here. All of them have Aftermath Physical Damage Limit Plus. Presumably, there will be, like, at least three tiers of amounts of Physical Damage Limit you get with the Aftermath for uh, 1,000 to 3,000 TP. Of course, for, for these specific jobs, that's not very helpful because these tend to be very attack-starved jobs with Red Mage Paladin and Blue Mage. Although I will note, this is the only weapon that lists attack plus 70 on it. None of the others have any attack listed on them. I'm not quite sure what that's about. Maybe that's also because we really didn't need a, another sword with Refresh and DT. So you know, n now we've got Malignant Sword, We've got the Paladin SU5, Tizona to certain extent. I mean, it's not technically refreshed, but I mean, it's all the MP you need. You've got the sword from Odyssey. We've got a lot of swords with basically the same kind of stat line. Even uh, the original Excalibur, which this is kind of replacing. Okay, you got shield block rate instead of DT, but you've got refresh and regen with the Aftermath. So we've got a lot of swords already with very similar stat line here so this is, does not excite me very much um also right now we don't know if you'll be able to make a new weapon because none of these have none of the new stages and i'm only showing the final stage have the uh consumes your soul thing which wakes you up and so that's a big thing to give up and you know if if You've already got a bunch of swords that basically do this already. 
I'd rather keep a sword that wakes me up, personally. So I'm not excited about this sword. Uh, Dex and Mind are okay stats, but not really amazing stats. There's only one Dex-based weapon skill at the moment. Now, we don't know if the new weapon skill is Dex-based. Would not be shocked to find out the new weapon skill is probably Dex and Mind-based. That, that might be the way they do things, is they, they just give you the stats for the new weapon skill. But we don't know yet. You'll also note there's no MAB on here. You do get a decent amount of magic damage, but that's about it. No int. And I really just didn't need another refresh in DT sword. And it's DT1, it's not even DT2, so... Uh, I'm not excited about the sword. Okay, next we have the katana. Uh, dex and agility. I mean, it's okay. It's not amazing stats to give it. Uh, you'll notice no attack. You do have a good amount of magic damage, and magic damage is really important for ninjutsu. So, that's good. But no MAB. Uh, they give it store TP plus 10. Okay. And again, PDL and uh, Weapon Skill, which we don't know how good it is. I mean, fourfold attack seems decent, but who knows? I don't think this is necessarily an obvious offhand or anything, so I think this one's just going to depend on the Weapon Skill. Ninja is another job that is often attack starved, so the PDL is somewhat dubious. Obviously, with Warrior Sub, you can uh, Berserk a decent amount of the time, which helps with that, but... Uh, depending on what you're doing, you may want a different sub. So, Okay, so here we have the gun. There's a number of interesting things here. One, you'll notice it says scavenge prime bullet. Now, I didn't see anything listed as prime bullet, but we did get this new bullet, so I'm guessing this is what you get. Now, a lot of issues here. It's got a rare tag, so you only get one. And it's very much physical oriented stats here but most of the good physical ranged weapon skills use more than one bullet so you got some issues here uh like this probably isn't that great with last stand but i mean it is a good set of stats but it's just only having one of them it's like well what are you going to use it with? there are some weapon skills you could use it with potentially but i don't know it seems a little problematic other things i want to point out here they put decks on this is the new weapon skill for gun dex based? Like, if it is, it's the first one for marksmanship with that. If you had put this on the bow, I could have at least seen, okay, you're using it for the their Empyrean weapon skill, sure. But here, I, I don't know why there's dex there. It does nothing for ranged. And thus, there's a weapon skill with that property. Critical hit rate plus 15% is pretty good, but marksmanship doesn't have any good crit weapon skills that you like to use. Now, I will note with the Aftermath PDL, ranged crits scale way better with PDL than melee crits do. So there is some potential there, although I don't see it being able to compete at all with the Empyrean with the occasionally uh, deal triple damage like that. It's just... I don't see it overcoming that without some insane PDL and, like, zeroing out your enemy's defense. I mean, there, there's a little bit of potential there that, you know, it. those are stats that go well together with the critical hit rate and the PDL. Had they put these stats on the bow, I think I would have been a lot more interested. But with the gun, I don't, I don't know quite what they're doing here. Unless the weapon skill is really good, I have my doubts. Now, it is a, it looks like a single hit weapon skill, so... Uh, the bullet's probably good for the weapon skill. And you'll note, it also has dex and agility. So if it is a dex and agility weapon skill, you're getting quite a bit between them. But, you know, it remains to be seen how good the weapon skill will be. In terms of just other uses, I have my doubts. Okay, here's the scythe. Now, I wanted to highlight the weapon skill here, because it absorbs HP and MP. Now, of course, Scythe already has access to a weapon skill that absorbs MP with Entropy for any weapon. And, of course, the Relic Scythe uh, with Catastrophe has, absorbs HP. So, potentially does it all at once, but it's not like it's some new ability that Scythe didn't already have. You could already get your HP or MP. Now you just get them both at the same time. And the question is, how good is the weapon skill in terms of damage? Now, they've given it Strength and Int. Those are the stats you want. Those are good for most of your weapon skills with Scythe. Uh, triple Attack plus 6%. Uh, 
is decent. Uh, I do worry a little bit with Aftermath PDL with Scythe, given that Scythe already has the highest PDL in the game, especially on Dark Knights. So, are, are you going to find enough attack to actually use uh, PDL Aftermath? Maybe. I mean, Dark does get access to an awful lot of attack, so you know, that's a maybe, but it remains to be seen. Uh, now, you'll note the damage is very high. Uh, basically, all these weapons have very high damage, again, because they they appear to be a tier above the current Remus with the uh, 277 skill instead of 269. So that does help all of these uh, be a bit more useful than they might look at first glance. Okay, the pole arm. Strength and vitality. Sure, those, those are solid stats for pole arm. You've got double attack plus 10%. That's good. Dragoon tends to stack a lot of double attack, but while we can reach 100%, it's difficult for us to. So uh, we can certainly fit in another 10% without wasting any stats anywhere. That's good. And double attack's generally the direction we go um, in terms of stacking multi-attack. It That works out well for us. And then they gave us some Wyvern accuracy, magic accuracy, and three levels on the Wyvern. Now, one thing I will note here, I don't think it really matters, but pretty much all the other uh, pet weapons uh, specifically state in their aftermath that it includes their pet. This one does not. So uh, it looks like we're probably not getting PDL for our Wyvern with the aftermath. Not that it matters very much, but I mean, we can transfer over most of our buffs to our Wyvern, so it's not completely crazy. Wouldn't have been completely crazy to give us PDL for a Wyvern. We might be able to use that sometimes. But looks like that's not going to be an option for us, most likely, unless they just forgot. Three levels and some accuracy isn't going to do a whole lot for Wyvern, but it, it will give them a bit more accuracy, so we can probably get a little bit more TP out of them. Again, like most of these weapons, it's going to come down to, is the weapon skill good? If it is, then it's a good weapon. If it's not, I doubt we'll use it very much. Okay, great sword. Now, this is one of the ones with four jobs on it, so... That gives it a bit more options to be used, but uh, let's take a look here. So strength and vitality, those are good stats to have. Store TP plus 10, not particularly exciting, but fine. And then you got the PDL aftermath. Now, unless its new weapon skill is particularly strong, what, you're primarily using uh, your, your big multi-hit weapon skill on Greatsword with this, probably, and... That has an attack penalty, so it's hard to use the PDL. Yeah, I'm doubting this sees a lot of use unless the uh, weapon skill that goes with it is particularly strong, uh, just at first glance. Now, of course, with any of these, if if they give you like a ludicrous amount of PDL, and then they they might be good regardless, as long as you can zero out your enemy's defense, which. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So that would, but that would at least make them all situationally good if the PDL stacks high enough. And just at first glance, not knowing how high that goes, not knowing if there's anything hidden, this doesn't look particularly exciting. Which is disappointing since this was like the the main one they were showing during the missions. Okay, Grit Katana, uh, strength and dex. That's really good. No MAB, no magic damage. So not particularly good for hybrids. Double attack plus 10%, so that's going to mess up all your Zanshin builds. Like, yeah, you really don't want 10% double attack for a Zanshin build. Although, to be fair, the Zanshin builds, I feel, have been a little overhyped. Like, there's plenty of other builds you can do on Samurai that are perfectly fine. Um, and this would work fine with any of those builds. I think part of it is people people like having the Zanshin build because it's so different from all the other melee jobs. And so they don't like just... Of course, you can do a build that's very similar to your other melee jobs if you want, and this would work well with something like that. But uh, the the unique samurai only Zanshin build, uh, you would not want to use this with. Of course, the weapon skill we don't know how good it is. I will note with the PDL plus aftermath, most of the good Great Katana weapon skills have some kind of attack bonus on them. Uh, there's certainly ways to take advantage of a PDL uh, boost here on Great Katana. Some hit and miss on here. Yeah, it'll mess up Sanjin builds, but 
You just don't do a Zanshin build with this weapon and you'll be fine. Great Axe. Here's another uh, double attack weapon. Of course, Strength Vitality, great. But with 10% double attack. Now, the problem for Warrior is they're really getting to the point where they have so many really good double attack pieces that it's hard to fit them all in and not just go over 100%. So they might have to give up a good piece just to not waste the stats to use this. So that's a little problematic. But... You know, that, that that's, you know, when they talk about, like, first world problems, like, oh, no, I have too much double attack. I need to swap something to, to a piece that's maybe not quite as good in a vacuum, but which has something besides double attack. The horror. Um, like, that's fine. Warrior, of course, can full-time berserk, so PDL limit is more usable on Warrior than a lot of other jobs. And Warrior tends to appreciate the plus accuracy more than a lot of other jobs as well. So, yeah, it seems like a decent option. The, again, it'll depend a ton on if the weapon skill is good or not. But, yeah, it seems like a reasonable stat line. But I have no confidence as to if this will actually be used yet. Okay, the club. Straight up, I would say, unless they've changed it so that you can upgrade, so that you can start a new weapon after you've upgraded one, don't upgrade this because I don't care how much cure potency or whatever it gives you. I want to be able to wake myself up and this doesn't wake you up anymore. So for white mage, especially, but also geo, uh, being able to wake yourself up is infinitely more useful than anything this thing gives you. So that's why I say like right now, unless Unless they've changed it so that you can go back and make an unupgraded one after you upgrade this. I would absolutely not make this under any circumstances. I would I would drop it <laughs> to start over if I accidentally upgraded this. And its stats aren't even that exciting to me. Strength in mind, sure, I guess. MAB is nice, but whatever. And then regen and DT, and you don't even give your pet any DT. Aftermath of magic damage and cure potency. Okay, but your cure potency doesn't matter if you're asleep. So, no, I, I think this is terrible. Uh, don't make this. Horn. Now, I do need to note, the unupgraded horn was arguably the best prime weapon because you could swap to it to wake yourself up without losing TP. So this has to be really good to be worth giving that up. And it is really, really, really good. So... Grants two additional song effects and all songs plus four. So that's your harp and your gala horn all in one. And so you might be going, oh, but I already have horn and gala horn, so why do I need to combine them? Well, this means you only have to sing once. You don't have to set up the four songs, then write over them and all that. It makes it so much simpler, so much faster. That's the key. With this, I mean, well, the sad part is, we might start asking bards and alliance content to swap parties and stuff again because you'll be able to sing so much faster and easier and there won't be giant complications. And on top of all of that, you got a new song with this, which increases PDL. Now, you need enough attack to use that, but it's not uncommon on bard right now to use an attitude because you just didn't need another minuet. I think you use this instead of an etude in most of those snares, unless it's like a nuking thing or something. And very often this will be uh, your fifth song when you're two-houring sort of thing, I think. Yeah, I mean, having a PDL song can be incredibly powerful, depending how much it is. Now, I will note, technically, you may want to keep the Durdabla round for slightly larger AoEs. So maybe it hasn't been completely replaced. But yeah, this is going to pretty much replace your harp and your horn pretty good and and it's way better than both because it all comes in one so you're not having to resync that's the really big thing here it's not having to resync so much and that means you have more time to melee or do support or afk <laughs> i know what you bards are up to <laughs> so here's the dagger and i'm thinking given that i definitely going to upgrade the horn I might end up having to not upgrade the dagger just so that I have a way to wake up my bard. Although the stats look fairly decent here. Not amazing, but decent. So 
You've got Dex, Agility, and then they threw in some bonus Charisma. Accuracy, Magic Accuracy. Uh, no Magic Damage, but Triple Attack plus 6%. That's about in line with where other daggers are these days. It's not amazing, but it's, it's fine. Obviously, the PDL Aftermath probably don't need on most of these jobs, other than maybe Dancer. So they tend to be a bit more on the Attack Starf side. Um, and we've got a fourfold weapon skill. Don't know how good it is yet. Of course, if it's really good, you might still want it. But I know at least for Bard, I kind of like the idea of being able to wake myself up. And I have to make that horn. So this might be I might be willing to just keep this unupgraded and sacrifice my TP whenever I need to wake myself up. Because that's more important on Bard. Okay, the staff. The staff is really exciting. So... Int in mind, 35 each, solid, accuracy, magic accuracy, 80 MAB, 325 magic damage. So already for nuking, that's looking really competitive. And of course, you've got the higher skill with it. And then for the avatar, 35 all accuracy, plus three levels, blood pack damage plus 50 and then the aftermath, including avatars, magic attack bonus, and magic damage plus. Now the weapon skill here does not appear to be elemental. So the weapon skill will probably not be amazing for any of these jobs. Obviously, you can do some nutty things with uh, Black Mage or Scholar with elemental weapon skills. So it's a little disappointing that this would appear to be a physical weapon skill. But if you're just trying to set up for nuking or for blood packs... There's definitely some value here. Now, I guess I'll start by comparing this to Nirvana for Summoner. Uh, this is pretty obviously better for uh, magic, but doubt it's going to beat an AM3 Nirvana for physical. And I'd have to run the numbers on the hybrid. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty good. But I'm going to really focus on the... Black Mage and Scholar side of things, because that those are, those are the jobs I've been using a lot for Sortie, which is where we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff. So, I mean, if these are the jobs I'm having to play to get all the weapons, then we need to max out those jobs. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here I've put up the uh, Black Mage Mythic, because it's better than the Scholar Mythic. And we've got the Bunzai Ride Amarapi Shield combo over here. And I just threw on an Enki strap, which I would probably use for either of these, just to um, be able to have a fair comparison with the shield here. So, first of all, just comparing to the Mythic staff here, 10 more MAB, 5 more Magic Accuracy. Obviously, you get the more skill as well. 35 Int, which this just doesn't have. Sure, you've got the Enhanced Elemental Seal effect, but you so rarely use that for nukes when you could use it for impact or for getting burn on or any number of other things. So that doesn't do much. And you've got quite a bit more magic damage as well. So that's already looking good. Now we don't know how strong the aftermath is, but I'm guessing, you know, between the MAB and magic damage, it's probably at least comparable to the MAB bonuses you can get with the mythic. Now the mythic does give you some more flexibility because you, you can go like, more melee focused, get your AM3 going. Your mythic weapon skill is quite strong with this weapon. Of course, you have better weapon skills, but you have to have weird sub jobs to uh, take advantage of Cataclysm. So even without changing your sub job, you've got your mythic weapon skill that's quite good and this boosts it quite a bit. This isn't boosting any of your good weapon skills and Unless you're going with a weird sub job so you can get Cataclysm. In a more melee focused uh, event, the Mythic may still be better. But if you're focused on nuking, unless this Aftermath is like really weak or something, I have trouble seeing how the Mythic's going to compete. And then we have to look at the other combo here, which is the good old Bunsai's Rod Amarapi Shield. Now, of course, I prefer to use a staff because you've got. So much more utility between Merker, so you never have to worry about MP, and uh, Shatter Soul, or with Black Mage, of course, you can use the Mythic Weapon skill to lower the enemy's magic defense bonus. So 
there's a lot of utility the staff has that the club doesn't have. So if they're close, I'm I'm going to prefer the staff. But looking here, so keep in mind you've got the extra int. So there's 45 int versus 28 int. You got a bit more magic accuracy here, but you're also not getting as much skill. So that kind of balances out a bit, but I think you're still ahead on magic accuracy over here. You're definitely still ahead on magic attack bonus. Keep in mind, you can get up to another 30 through the augment here. So you're at 65, you know, you're, you're over 100. It's only 80 over here. And you did get the magic burst damage, but that's pretty easy to cap out regardless on either Black Mage or Scholar. You don't really need the 10 here. But also, an awful lot more magic damage. And then if, if you can get an aftermath going on top, I think it it's very likely this staff, uh, at least when the aftermath is up, is probably crushing this. And without the aftermath, it's probably competitive. And with all the extra utility, I'd I'd probably just use the staff. So yeah, I think this is going to be the go-to nuking staff now for both Black Mage and Scholar. And I think for Summoner, you're using it for all your magical blood packs for sure. And you might even just use it uh, kind of like unless you're setting up an AM3 Nirvana thing. And probably not bothering to make a Nirvana if you don't already have one. Yeah, this staff is amazing. They hit it out of the park on this one, which it's about time. <laughs> we have struggled for so long to have a good Rima uh, staff for any of these jobs. So I appreciate that. And we'll see. Maybe the weapon skill does something interesting too. Okay, archery. Now here's one. If they had just swapped the stats around with the stats on the gun, this would have been so much more interesting. But it's here it's kind of like, uh-huh. So they have the same thing with the arrow, I believe. So... Um, but strength and agility, somewhat better. You got store TP instead of crit rate, and you got the PDL. Now, you do have a good critical weapon skill on archery, but this doesn't particularly boost it. The, the PDL is nice. It would go well with that weapon skill, but you don't get the crit rate. It doesn't have the dex, which that's a dex weapon skill. <laughs> that they really didn't want things to work out for a ranger here, it seems. One thing that I do think is interesting with both the gun and the bow is the idea of, does the aftermath work for your physical attacks as well? So can you just put the aftermath up and then have a PDL bonus for your Savage Blade or whatever? Um, and then just have a pile of strength here instead of the uh, weapon skill damage and uh, TP bonus, potentially. I don't know. That might be something to play around with. Uh, maybe you'd, you'd go with the PDL. Because with Kraken Club, do you really need the TP bonus? Maybe having a PDL would be more useful. Those would be the, the sorts of questions I would have for this. Unless the weapon skill happens to be particularly strong. Might just try to use it to go a different route with the uh, good old uh, Nagling Kraken Club Savage Blade combo. Okay, the axe. So a few things going on here. It's Beastmaster only. Uh, you've got the Strength, Dex, and Charisma, so they gave you the bonus Charisma. Critical hit rate plus 15%. Now there are some decent critical uh, weapon skills for axe, but they've gone a bit out of fashion, so I don't know if this will bring those back. you got the Accuracy and plus 3 levels for the pet, which is good. Aftermath includes the pet for the PDL. Again, you got to set that up. You... Kind of have to live inside some bubbles for that to work. I mean, there's some potential here. Level plus three for Beastmaster pets actually does a lot. A five-fold attack sounds decent, especially with damage varies with TP. But again, kind of have to know the rest of the stats to know how good that is. So, okay, here we go. Hand-to-hand. -hand. Strength and dex, great stats to have. Obviously, the higher skill on hand-to-hand, -hand, a bit more important than for other jobs. Uh, critical hit rate plus 15%. There's a lot of good crit weapon skills for both Monk and Pup that are widely used. And you get the accuracy and plus 3 levels for the Automaton, which is good. And the Automaton also gets the PDL. Okay. From the Monk perspective, 
biggest problem here is with impetus up, which is when we, you really want to go with the crit weapon skills, you're already going over 100% crit rate a lot of the time. And when impetus is down, do you necessarily even want to be using those kind of weapon skills? And of course, this, unless there's something hidden, isn't boosting your white damage like the Empyrean is. And it's not giving you the TP bonus to help you with some of the other weapon skills that scale so much with TP that hand to hand already has. Of course, like I say with most of these, if the weapon skill is good, it'll be good just for that. Monk does appreciate having more PDL. They're, they tend to have somewhat limited options for PDL at the moment. So, And PDL works really well with a lot of their weapon skills. More weapon skill damage isn't that great. So there's some potential here, but I'm, I'm not sold on it yet. And obviously for the Puppet, there, there are some decent things you can do here with uh, the bonuses the Puppet gets as well. Some potential, we'll see. Okay, the shield. The shield is already you know, basically replaced O-Chain in most circumstances. Uh, and now we've got three more tiers of it being stronger. And they gave it everything you would have wanted. So, they threw in some vitality in mind. Awesome. The defense is now the highest defense shield in the game. Which means you're now casting protects in this as well. Uh, evasion and magic evasion. Magic evasion being especially helpful. Shield skill, even higher. All status ailments, plus 20. So now you wear this shield also just to help defend against any kind of fight where you worry about status ailments as well. On top of it being a size 6 shield that has skill, gives you a block rate far higher than any other shield. And then finally... Magic damage taken to 25%. So, technically this doesn't fully replace the Aegis. Technically, if you're fighting something that exclusively uses magic damage, where shield blocking is completely useless, the Aegis can still win because uh, it it has a bit more magic damage taken to so that you can reach the full 87.5% cap because this will only get you to the 75 and that's actually a pretty notable difference. You know, it's the difference between taking 25 versus taking 12.5. So with the Aegis, you can literally cut the damage you're taking in half compared to this if you're exclusively taking magic damage. But, and this is the big but, this is giving you 100% block rate against basically anything in the game where the Aegis is giving you like a floored block rate against anything of importance. So... If there's any physical damage at all, you're using this. So Aegis is now, for a pure magic damage, you're still going to cast Phalanx in your pre-win, and for everything else, you're using this. And it's blowing everything else out of the water. This is ridiculously strong. So uh, the three standouts to me from all of this is the shield, the horn, and the staff. The rest, I think, are largely going to depend on if the weapon skills are good or if there's some other hidden effects we don't know about yet. And I would say, for sure, don't make the club right now unless they change it so that you can start a new basic one because I'd much rather my white mages and shields be able to wake themselves up than have the silly stats they put on those. And if you play red mage or blue... I mean, honestly, the sword I would probably not upgrade either. It's less common that you would need to wake yourself up for those jobs, but Red Mage, Blue, and Paladin can all wake themselves, can all heal others. And if you need the ability to wake yourself up, you need it. And the sword was not very exciting. So I think that's an option. The dagger, I might keep unupgraded just for Bard. Although you could also use that for waking up your Red Mage as well. Overall, I'd say these, there's some really exciting weapons here. Supposedly purple glow in the dats. I'm pretty excited for that. Of course, if it's a ton of sortie, yeah, that's going to be so annoying. I really don't want to do more sortie at this point. We'll know a lot more about the weapon skills soon. And then I might come back and do like a tier list or something. But uh, I think that's all for now. Now, I've been moving a lot, so that's why I didn't get this out right away. And we're still finishing the move and all that. It's going to be a while. So we'll see. Uh, 
I'll probably get a tier list out on these weapons once we know a bit more about anything hidden, what the weapon skill stats actually are, get some idea of how useful they are for their particular jobs. But I think I've put out what I think are the three big standouts right now, and uh, we'll see where the rest fall. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see all my future tier lists, both for the Prime Weapons, and I'll probably finally get around to finishing off the rest of the Rimas and then maybe redoing some of the others, now that we're finally going to have our Primes to compare everything to. And uh, then we can see, you know, how mad I can make the Warriors this time.